Hello bookworms! Today I'm going to be sharing my best books of 2023. This is a video that I always look forward to doing. I think it's so fun to reflect back on the reading year and just pick out all of the books that were absolute standouts and new favorites. And for me, I read over 200 books this year and I have to say it was surprisingly easy to pick out my 15 favorites. And with that being said, there were also a ton of books that I read this year that were really, really great reads, but just fell short of being becoming one of my best books of the year. So instead of doing a separate video about those books, once I go through my top 14 books of the year, I'm also going to do kind of like a quick round of honorable mentions just so that I can share that I feel like these books were also really worth reading. And this is also unconventional for me, but I usually don't include rereads on this list. And while I didn't, there aren't any on my best books that are rereads. I do want to just highlight three rereads that I did this year that were like some of the best reading experiences that I had. The first one was the Hunger Games trilogy. I listened to these on audio and I just was like completely enthralled and completely drawn into the story and I loved it so so much. The first time that I read the Hunger Games I really wasn't a YA reader like almost at all and I had been just expecting something completely different and completely like more in depth. I thought that the Hunger Games was going to play out over the course of the three books. I didn't realize that we were going to have an entire hun Hunger Games just within the first book. Rereading it and kind of like knowing what to expect, I enjoyed it so much more for what it was this time around and I really really just appreciated it and appreciated Suzanne Collins's story, her writing, her characters. Like everything about this was just so good and so powerful and I definitely could foresee myself reading this again in 2024. I also reread the entire Throne of Glass series all the way from Assassin's Blade to Kingdom of Ash. So I've listened to these on audio and totally, totally enjoyed the experience. I think that Elizabeth Evans is such a great narrator, but literally like the minute that I finished listening to Kingdom of Ash, I was like, I want to read this again, like right now. <laughs> Despite having like a million books on my TBR, I was like, this is like where I want to spend my time. So you'll see in another video, but one of my goals for 2024 is actually to reread all of Throne of Glass. But this time I want to read it physically so that I can make highlights and notes and annotations. And I also reread We Were Liars this year and totally, totally loved it again. This is one that I read when I was not a huge YA reader and I remember like really liking it at the time, but going back, revisiting it, I love it even more. And I just felt like the writing was so beautiful and so lyrical, it was almost like poetry. It really just like evoked the feeling of summer. I totally enjoyed this one and I, I reread it because I also read Family of Liars, which is like the prequel to this story. And I'm just so glad that I did. It was such a fun experience. Okay, so these books are not totally ranked, but they are kind of ranked. I tried to do my best with ranking them, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with number 15 on my list and then work my way down to my top, top read of the year. Okay, so starting with number 15, this is a nonfiction book. It's called Outlive the Science and Art of Longevity by Dr. Peter Attia. It is just all really important, vital information about your health, how you can improve your health, how you can expand your life. And it also challenges what's currently accepted in the medical field. So I found it to be really, really interesting. Like this doctor is definitely like pro-medicine, pro-vaccines, all of that kind of stuff. So it's not like he is like some like crazy kind of guy that is just saying that everything that we're doing is wrong. He does believe in that stuff, but he doesn't believe in the way that it's really like being administered and the way that it's being handled. Like one of the early things on in the book is how he talks about how a doctor will never tell you that diet and exercise would be like the number one, number two thing that would improve your health. Even if you're on the cusp of getting close to having something become a problem, they don't address it until it already is a problem. And by doing things like like dieting and exercising, you can help prevent some of these things from happening to you. Doctors don't really practice preventative care or preventative medicine. They're more practicing treatment and treatment is 
you know, what they get paid to do. So I found it to be really interesting. I also found it to be really, really helpful. I liked the idea of seeing like what the medical field could do better in order to better service people. It also talks about how they don't necessarily look at like each individual and find the best solution for them. There are all of these like steps that people have to take in order to sometimes get to the one thing that will help them. And that's largely because of like insurance. I just liked the way that he explained everything. It made a huge impact on me. It also made me change some of the things that I've been doing in my life. One of the huge ones being that I've actually started eating chicken and turkey since I read this book and I'd been vegetarian for 20 years. So that was like a huge, huge change for me. And I've actually noticed some really like positive changes within my own body since I have started eating meat again, which I never thought that I would say. I still feel like weird about it because I have identified as a vegetarian for almost my entire life. I mean, I don't think that there's anything more <laughs> life-changing than that. Book number 14 on my list is Still House Lake by Rachel Kane. I am just obsessed with this series. It follows the wife of a serial killer who didn't know that her husband was a serial killer and her two kids. And at the beginning of the book, she finds out what's been going on right in the garage that is attached to her house that shares a wall with her kitchen, yet she had no clue what was happening in that little area. And her husband has been put in jail. He's been convicted. She herself has also been tried as a potential accomplice because many people found it hard to believe that she wouldn't have known what was going on in her own house. And now her and her two kids are on the run. They are constantly having to change their names, have new identities, start over in new places so that they can avoid all of the people who believe that she was involved in helping her husband. It's so exciting. Like this this is the first book in a series. I read the second one as well. I actually think that the second one I like even more than the first, but this is one of the only thrillers that I read this year that actually felt like thrilling and super suspenseful and like made me so nervous, but in like a really like excited kind of good way. I just really enjoyed the story and there are six books in total. So I'm really excited to continue and finish the series in 2024. Number 13 on my list is Mixed Signals by B.K. Borison. This is the third book in the Love Light series, the first one being Love Light Farms. And it takes place in this really cute little small town. It's a romance series. They're all companion novels. And in this one, we are following Layla, who is the baker at Love Light Farms, which is a Christmas tree farm. It's all about her like seeing that her two business partners and best friends have found their person, have fallen in love. And she's really wanting that too, but she's had pretty bad luck when it comes to dates. And then she ends up getting saved by this one guy in her town from a really terrible date. And she's always found him to be really cute. And he's also someone that's had a lot of really bad luck with dating. So the two of them decide to start dating each other, like fake dating as practice in order to get critiqued by the other person, see what it is that they could do better in order to meet the right person and be able to be in a relationship. But obviously the two of them really like each other and it gets confusing because they're fake dating, but there are real feelings there. So it was just so cute. I also really love any book that involves baking. So this one just really spoke to me. I found it to be so adorable. I really loved the love interest, Caleb. I thought he was just such like a nice guy and it's so rare that like you get to read just like a guy that's as nice as him. I just love their relationship. I loved the way that they got together. I thought it was just such a great story and I'm so excited for the final book. I wish that we were getting more of them. Number 12 on my list is the Happy Ever After playlist by Abby Jimenez. This is another romance and this one follows a main character named Sloane and after something really horrible happens to her, she's kind of like in a depression. She's finding it really hard to move on with her life. She's just suffered a great loss. So in the beginning, she is dealing with a lot of grief. She's like driving and this dog jumps into her car and she doesn't see an owner anywhere. So she ends up taking the dog home and she starts taking care of him and she does everything that she can to find the owner, but she is struggling. And then she finally gets an email from the person. It turns out that the guy who owns the dog has been away on tour because he's a musician and somebody has been supposed to take care of his dog. So that's why he's like not there, but she's like, 
I'm going to need you to prove that you actually like care about this dog before I'll give it back to you. So the two of them kind of start talking because of that. And then their chemistry is just like so good. And I just love the way that he helps her like see that she can be happy again. And their relationship is so cute. I also love like celebrity romances. I always find those to be really entertaining. So this one just like I thought was so good. And I just love Abby Jimenez so much. This was like my year of Abby Jimenez. There's another book from her on this list. I just really love this one. I thought it was so great. And I wish that she would even write more about these characters because I've just fallen in love with them. Number 11 on my list is The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Roshani Chakshi. I absolutely love this book so much. I have to say, like, I was not expecting to like it the way that I did. I actually skipped it. It was the fairy loot book of the month in January, and I skipped it. And then I read it later on in the year and just like completely fell in love with it and had to buy a copy secondhand. So wish I would have saved that skip. So it follows this like mysterious woman and this guy who is a scholar and they fall in love and get married. But there's one caveat. He has agreed that he would never pry into her past. But then when her aunt is passing away, the two of them have to return to her childhood home, which is called the House of Dreams. And he can't help himself. Like he starts looking into things and there starts being like a mystery that's kind of unraveling. But I have to say there's like really no plot to this book at all. This is 100% a vibes book. It just has exquisite writing. It's so beautiful. And I just really, really loved the story and just the images conjured through reading the prose in this book. I loved it. Like I just felt so good reading this book and I would 100% read it again. I think it's good to go in knowing like as little as possible about it. It's one that you just kind of want to like learn as everything is unfolding. So beautiful. So well done. Number 10 on my list is Heartstopper Volumes 1 through 5 by Alice Oseman. I binge read this series and then read the fifth one when it came out more recently and just loved every single installment. I think that Nick and Charlie are so cute and like they just make me so happy and feel so good. Like I love reading about the two of them. This story is like so wholesome and so beautiful. It follows two guys who are in school together and Charlie is gay. Nick is not gay but then they become like really close friends and he realizes like maybe he is and it's just like about their budding relationship it's so so cute it's also a comic you can read it as a webtoon for free or you can read these graphic novel versions highly highly recommend them and i'm really looking forward to watching the show next year because i haven't done that yet but i am just in love with these characters. Number nine on my list is The Only One Left by Riley Sager. I loved this book so much and I was so glad because Riley Sager's last couple of books were flops for me, but this one was like it. It was so good. It took place on the coast of Maine, which is a setting that is just so appealing to me. I absolutely loved that part of it. It's also like just so spooky. It takes place in this like crumbling kind of decrepit mansion that is sitting right on the coast, like right on a cliff. All of this lore about the the character that we're following in this book. So we're mainly following a caretaker who's been hired to go to this old mansion to take care of this person named Lenora, who there is a nursery rhyme about because everyone believes that she killed her entire family, but they did not have enough proof in order to convict her. So she has like pretty much never been seen since that night. And she's just been in this mansion and she's also been paralyzed. So she is literally just laying in bed. So like our character, our main character is kind of like frightened because she might be like a serial killer, but she's also like, she can't really do anything because she's paralyzed. So anyway, Lenora finds a way to be able to communicate with her because she also can't like speak. And she starts kind of writing to her through this typewriter and tells her that she wants to tell her what happened that night. It's so good. Like I'm like getting chills just thinking about this book. There was definitely a lot going on and it felt like the climax of this book was like so long. Like it just was never ending and there was just like reveal after reveal after reveal. So like there were some things that I thought like, okay, so this is where the story is going. And then there were other things where I was like, wow, there's more. <laughs> um, and I just had such a blast reading this one. I remember like I was on my way to work and I was so close to the end and I just like couldn't stop. So I literally 
just was like reading this while I was walking through the streets of New York City because I could not put it down. Number eight on my list is Ship of Magic by Robin Hobb. This is the beginning of her Live Ship Traders trilogy and I loved this. I was not surprised because Robin Hobb has some of the best writing of any fantasy writer I would say ever. Her character work is just unparalleled and I was so excited to meet some new people. And this is also a seafaring adventure, which is something that really, really appeals to me. So I just, oh, I just loved everything about this. And there's also like a dragon element to this story. There's sea dragons. And I just found the whole thing to be like so cool. And I think that Robin just writes characters, like I said, like it's unparalleled, but like she writes characters that are so good that like you just want to protect them with everything that you have. And then she can also write characters that are just like the worst and you would do anything to see like this character suffer a horrible fate. It just like evokes such strong feelings within me. Like anytime that she is writing a story, I always get so attached <laughs> to her characters. And that's really like what compels me through. Like this is obviously a pretty long book, but I think I read it in like a couple of days because I just like couldn't put it down. Like I just needed to know what was gonna happen. And I really need to continue and read the rest of the series, which I'm planning on doing next year. Anytime that I'm like, I just wanna read like a really good book. Like I know I can count on Robin Hobb to deliver. Number seven on my list is Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. My friend Alexa from Alexa Loves Books really encouraged me to read this one. And I'm so glad that she did because I absolutely loved it. It is a more literary contemporary fiction novel following two characters who were like best friends from when they were kids and they work on this video game together and they end up getting like super famous off of this game and it's just like all about their lives from childhood until adulthood and all of like the experiences that they've had together, all of the trials and tribulations that went into creating this game, all of like their time apart from each other. What's also interesting about it is that it is not a love story. It is two friends and it's so rare that you get like such a such an interesting like friendship novel, but I just loved it. Like it definitely took a turn at one point that I was not anticipating, but I really, really loved it. I thought it was so well done. I really loved reading all of the elements of the video games. I thought that stuff was like fascinating. I'm not totally surprised because I remember reading Young Jane Young by Gabrielle Zevin and I really loved that book, but I didn't know that this was going to be like a new favorite for me. This one just was so good. Number six on my list is A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson. This one you might remember, I read this during Summerween. It was actually, I think it was like my second or third read and I just fell completely in love with this one. It's another one that I really love for the prose. I really like the way that the story is told. We are following A Bride of Dracula. You find out like right in the beginning of the book, like literally within the first page that she ends up killing Dracula. I also really like that Dracula is never named in the book. This story is really about his bride and another bride and another male character that he also takes on. And it's like really about them like finding their freedom from this really powerful man. It was so good, so well written and so lyrical. And it's about vampires, which is always something that's really enticing to me. But I think like, again, like just her word choices and everything were so impeccable. I just couldn't picture like better writing for a vampire novel. I was just so like enthralled and so just consumed by this book. It was so good. Then at number five, I have the other Abby Jimenez book on my list and that is Yours Truly. This is definitely my favorite romance of hers that I've ever read and one of my favorite romances of all time. In this one, we are following two doctors. They are both ER doctors. So Brianna is has already been working at this hospital for a while and she's up for a promotion. She's pretty much like the only person who is going for this job, but right before she is supposed to get it, they hire a second doctor named Jacob who is very experienced and now she is competing with this guy for her job so right off the bat she cannot stand him she's so mad that this guy like came in after she's been working there and so loyal for years and now has like a shot at the job that she's supposed to be getting but they just 
are the perfect pair. So Jacob is so sweet. He has anxiety and many other people have said this in their review, which I was surprised to hear, but also like made me feel like, you know, not as like alone because Jacob has anxiety, but he has anxiety in like a very similar way to the way that I have anxiety. And I just felt like it was the most accurate portrayal that I've ever read of having it. And it just made me feel like so comforted. And I really liked the way that Brianna would handle things with him. And I just loved the two of them. Like they were just such a great pair and just so, oh my gosh, I just love reading about them. The only thing that stopped this from being higher on my list is that there is like a lot of miscommunication toward the end. And I felt like that went on for a little bit longer than I would have liked, but I also can like very easily overlook it because I just loved the rest of the book so, so much. And I love Jacob's family. I love Brianna getting to know Jacob's family. Just like, oh my God, amazing. I just love this book like more than words can say. Number four on my list, I'm a little bit cheating because I have two books, Divine Rivals and Ruthless Vows, and these are the Letters of Enchantment duology. I love this series so much. Like, it is so good. I literally waited to film this video until I read Ruthless Vows because it's amazing, and it just made me so happy. Like, I think that Rebecca Ross's writing is so whimsical and so magical, and it takes place in, like, a World War One-esque world, and we're following these two characters who are rivals. They work at the same news paper. Hmm, this seems to be something that I enjoy. And they're both vying for the same position, but only one of them's going to get it. So Iris definitely has more animosity toward Roman than Roman has toward her in the beginning. They also start communicating through these magical typewriters and the two of them form like this really deep connection, but Roman knows that it's Iris the whole time and Iris has no idea that she's talking to Roman. And then they end up both getting more involved in the war. They end up going to the front lines. They totally fall in love. It's so cute, so beautiful. And I just love all of like the little touches of magic within this story. Like at Roman's house, I think that there are some old shoes that will sprout flowers or like stores will know what someone can afford and they will push that toward like the front of the shelf upon entrance or like you could be in a place where there's a cup of tea that never goes cold. And it was just like those little hints of magic that really like just made me so feel so like warm and fuzzy inside. I loved it. And there's also two gods in this book that are kind of like Hades and Persephone and they are at war with one another. And it's a war that is involving the civilians in the towns that Iris and Roman are from. So it's really like high stakes, but really beautiful. And like at the heart of it, despite all of this death and destruction going on, there's just this like gorgeous love story. And oh my gosh, I want to read this again. I love these characters so much. Then at number three on my list, which is also kind of cheating, I have The Red Rising Saga by Pierce Brown. So I read the first trilogy this year. I read them all back to back because I just had to, like I couldn't stop reading them. I fell so deep into a Red Rising hole. I loved them. I was like really, really surprised because a lot of times sci-fi can be kind of hit or miss for me, but this is definitely like sci-fantasy. And I think that that's also why it just like really worked for me. The beginning, like the first book was definitely more YA than the other two books. It definitely ages up as you keep reading. And also the first book reminded me a lot of The Hunger Games especially having had just read it, it definitely becomes its own thing. It's also like has a little bit, I would say like a little bit of Ender's Game to it. And I just absolutely loved it. We are following Darrow, who is a red, which is the lowest cast within this world that has a color cast system and golds are the highest. So he ends up finding out that the world is like really not the way that he thought that it was, like the way that he was led to believe. So he gets like surgery and he infiltrates the golds. He goes into their school and he rises up through their ranks in order to try to create some change, make some more equality for the different colors within the caste system. And it's just so good. And like, no one is safe. You never know what's gonna happen. It's very brutal. If you don't like violence, this is not the series for you, but it, like, I just couldn't look away. It was so fast paced, so exciting, so action packed, but also has such great character development and such great character depth. So cannot recommend the series enough. And I'm so excited to continue reading the next 
set of books in the series. Number two on my list is none other than Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson. This is the fourth book in the Stormlight Archive. I'm so, so glad that I ended up catching up on the series. I really, really love it. I really love these characters. Again, I feel like this series just has some of the most compelling characters in fiction and some really interesting portrayal of mental health. And I just love it. I love the world. I think the world is fascinating. It's so different than any kind of fantasy that I've ever read before. It's so creative, so inventive, and I just like want to know everything about it. I cannot wait until we get the final installment in 2025 now that that's been announced. I knew that it was coming and I'm really glad that I have caught up in time. I actually have Andrew reading the books now, which is really exciting. He's in the middle of Oathbringer, so he's actually catching up as well. Rhythm of War specifically, I read Oathbringer this year too, but Rhythm of War specifically was definitely my favorite. I really liked all of the sciencey stuff that went into it. I really liked the main perspective that we followed in this book, which I won't give away just because you might not know who we're going to be following, but I felt like it really, really added to the story. And I felt like so many questions were answered. I also have so many new questions too, but it was such high stakes and there was so much going on and eager to see how this one is going to conclude in book five, the first arc, because the series is going to be 10 books, but the first story arc is going to conclude in book five. And then finally at number one, my favorite book of the year is Secret History by Donna Tartt. And I actually read this one during my birthday week. And I just, again, it was one that like totally consumed my life. I was so taken in and just so fascinated by this whole situation. We are following a group of characters who are studying Greek classics at Hampton College in Vermont. And right in the very first chapter, we find out that one of their friends, that they murdered one of their friends. And the rest of the book is like explaining the series of events that led to that happening and also the fallout from that day, where their lives have gone now and how it still like tortures some of them. And like, oh my God, it was just so good. This book is like the mother of all dark academia and I get it. It's so, just so, so good. There, it's definitely just disturbing, like it's deeply disturbing, but especially like the last chapter, I like still think about it all the time. Like it haunts me. It is just so good. So well written, so well done. Like I just, it's like mind blowing that something so like such a masterpiece could exist. <laughs> it's definitely not for everyone. It's definitely, definitely like I wouldn't say that it's challenging to read, but I personally like books with short chapters and this book has like seven or eight chapters. So some chapters are like over a hundred pages. So it's definitely long. Like it definitely is really dense. It's definitely a literary fiction book, but it's so worth it. Like it's the payoff is, oh my God beyond. So this was definitely, definitely, definitely my favorite book of the year. And I'm going to be thinking about it for the rest of my life. Then I'm just going to move into some honorable mentions. And I'm going to go through these really quickly because I feel like this was already a pretty long video, but we're just going to go for it. So first up, I have When in Rome by Sarah Adams. This is one of the last books that I read during the year. And I actually feel like this has the potential to be a favorite to be a best book of the year, but I had a lot going on in my personal life at the time that I read it. So I just like wasn't totally focused and it took me so much longer to read this than it should have. But like, I just loved it as I was reading it. I had to reread things constantly because my mind kept wandering, but every time that I would, I would end up really loving it. So I actually kind of want to reread this maybe like in the spring or something. And I really feel like this could be a best read for me. I ended up giving it 4.5 stars and I like truly feel like it could be five stars. Like I, I loved it. It was so good. Next is One Dark Window and Two Twisted Crowns by Rachel Gillig. This is a duology and I really loved it. It's just so much fun. It takes place in this world that is shrouded in mist and there is like a king who is ruling and we are following a character who has been touched by this blight that is plaguing their land and there's like a monster that's living within her head. She has managed to like keep it a secret so far and she ends up having to team up with this other character and they need to reunite this deck of cards that can be used to end everything that's going on and make it like a safer world, safer safer kingdom for everyone who lives there. I just had such a blast reading this. It's very atmospheric. It's such a great fall read. 
And I especially loved the second book and I felt like it concluded really well. It was like a very solid ending for this duology. I was so invested in the characters and I really liked the extra perspectives that we got in the second book. So this definitely is like a favorite for me. Then I have Well Traveled by Jen DeLuca. This is the fourth book in the Well Met series, which is a series of romances set at the Renaissance Fair. And I really loved this installment. We are following Lulu, who is Mitch's cousin. Mitch is the love interest in the third book. And Lulu is a lawyer who has been living this life and kind of realizes that she wants a better work-life balance. So she ends up kind of impulsively quitting while she's at a Renaissance fair on a work trip. And she ends up meeting up with Stacy and Stacy's boyfriend who we met in the second book. She travels with them to a couple of different run fairs. She ends up falling in love with one of the guys who is also traveling at the run fair. And I really liked the tarot card element in this one. I think that was like really what made this one so much fun for me. And then also the fact that we just spend so much time at run fairs in this book, which is like why I love this series is being at the run fair. It's really like the setting more than anything. The first one in the series is still my favorite, but there's just like nothing better than these run fair romances. The next honorable mention on my list is the Dark Elements trilogy by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I ordered the fairy loot editions of these books and I'm so excited to get them. I actually binge read this series back to back. It was just so much fun. I feel like once a year, I usually like really like to just binge read like a YA series, like some kind of paranormal or fantasy or whatever. And I just feel like Jennifer L. Armentrout's older series are so good and like so much fun. Like they're not like the best books that I've ever read, but they're so much fun to read. And I thoroughly enjoyed my time reading this one. We're following a character who's part gargoyle and part demon. And there's basically like a war between the gargoyles and the demons. The gargoyles are like the protectors and the demons are obviously the bad people. And she obviously has two love interests, one who is a gargoyle, one who is a demon. And it, for me, it was very clear from book one who I wanted her to end up with. And something really interesting about this trilogy is that when Jennifer L. Armentrout was writing it in the past, she actually had people vote on who they wanted the main character to end up with. And then that's the way that she wrote the book. So I thought that that was super interesting. And I was also like, if she does not end up with the person that I want, I question everyone who voted in this poll. Like, <laughs> but loved it. I just thought it was so much fun. My next honorable mention is Happy Place by Emily Henry. I just always have such a blast reading her books, reading her romances. This is another one that I really loved because of the setting. It's set in Maine and we're following a group of friends after college and like it shows how friendships evolve over the years and the way that things change between people and it also shows how like this group of friends is still making an effort to remain together and like do things with each other even though it can be really hard like as you get older because there's just so much stuff going on with family. So I really really loved it like especially for that reason even more so than the romance and that's why this one isn't a favorite of the year for me because as much as like I loved the setting and I loved the friendship dynamics I didn't love the romance and it's a romance book so like you need to love the romance in order for it to be a best one but I still feel like it's an honorable mention because I like super super enjoyed it. My next honorable mention is Serpent in the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent and I loved this book. This one is about vampires. We are following our main character who is not a vampire but she has grown up as like the head vampire's daughter basically like he's like raised her and protected her and like taking care of her and now she's being forced to enter this competition that is full of vampires and she's gonna have to win in order to like become the heir to her father's empire of vampires. <laughs> it's just so much fun. Like I really really love this one. I really liked the relationship in this and I just had such a good time reading this one. I still need to read the novella and then the second book. It's going to wrap up in the second book. So I think there's supposed to be six books, but it's going to be like three duologies within this one series, all following like different sets of characters. So I'm excited to see how this one's going to end. I'm also really excited to like revisit these characters. Next is How to Fake It in Hollywood by Ava Wilder. This is another one that is a celebrity romance. I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. We're following a main character who is like very famous and she's kind of like 
becoming an it girl. She's really wanting to get this one part in a movie, but they are looking for someone who's going to be like a little bit more serious. And she's not like as well known as she could be. So her publicist ends up setting up this like fake relationship for her with this guy who is super famous, like super beyond famous. But after a tragic event, he just like completely disappeared from the public eye. So they set up like a fake PR relationship for the two of them. But obviously they end up having some real feelings for each other as they're spending time together. And it's definitely like heavy though. Like there's a lot of like heavy topics that are touched upon like alcoholism and grief. So like while it is like really like a fun celebrity romance, it's also like kind of like heavy and like a little bit dark at times. So I really liked it. It's pretty short, pretty quick. I think I read this one in like two days because I couldn't put it down. And I'm really excited to read Ava Wilder's other book, which I currently have sitting on my shelf. Then I want to mention Pretty Dead Queens by Alexa Dunn. This is a YA thriller and we are following a character who moves to her grandmother's house to live with her after her mother passes away. And her grandmother is like a very popular cult writer who writes murder mysteries. When her mom was younger and going to school, the prom queen or homecoming queen, I don't know, one of them <laughs> was, I think it was homecoming. I think the homecoming queen was murdered. And now like all of the years, these years later, our main character is going to live there and the same thing happens. So it looks like maybe there's like a copycat murderer and her grandmother also wrote a book about what happened. So she kind of needs to like go read her grandmother's stuff and try to like channel her grandmother's main character in order to solve this mystery. And I just thought it was so much fun. It was so well written. I felt like it had like a, a good amount of depth for a YA thriller. And I just thoroughly enjoyed this one. Then another YA thriller is One of Us is Back by Karen M. McManus. This is the third and final book in the One of Us is Lying trilogy. I really liked the first book. The second book I thought was like, okay, but didn't love it. So then I wasn't really sure what I was going to feel about the third book, but I wanted to read it anyway, because I have read like all of Karen's books, except for Two Can Keep a Secret, which is the only one that I have left at this point. Overall, I would say like, I didn't totally feel like this book was necessary. However, it was so much fun to be back with these characters that I love. And I felt like the way that it ended was so great. Like there was a lot of like poetic justice and I really liked that about it. I think like the way that it wrapped up, like it was very satisfying. Um, so this one definitely makes the list for that reason. And it was just like, it was really fun. Then a couple of nonfiction books that are honorable mentions are Beyond the Wand by Tom Felton. This is Tom Felton's memoir. It details all of like the time when he was filming Harry Potter and it's so much fun. Like I just loved all of like, the insight into filming things that like stories from behind the scenes that I had never heard before. And also just to get his like perspective on everything and hear like what it was like for him playing Draco, who was such a hated character and like real life interactions that he had with some people who couldn't separate like him, Tom, the actor from Draco, the character. I thought it was really interesting. And I just like had a blast listening to this. And a recent read was The OC, The Oral History. This one is all about the making and filming of the TV show, The OC. And I loved it. It had tons and tons of cast and crew interviews. And it was just like, made me so nostalgic because I loved the OC when I was younger and I've actually been rewatching it since I finished reading this. And it's really fun to know like the behind the scenes stuff while going into it. And I hadn't realized, like I have such strong, like fond feelings for this series, but I hadn't realized how much of the story happens, like just within the first season, like they were on like such an accelerated timeline. And that's like partially why the show was doing so well, because it was just so like, there was just so much happening, whereas any other show would have dragged out many of the storylines that happened within like the first three episodes, like that almost could have been a whole season within itself. But like, then it really suffered toward the end of the show, because they used up like all of the story right in the beginning and they had to keep like trying to add new characters which didn't really work because people liked the original characters that they met and then like come up with storylines which sometimes ended up being like just insane and yeah I feel like there's just so many like iconic moments in the show and I just loved it it made me so nostalgic and I'm really enjoying my rewatch of it too and then the last one I'll mention is The Woman in Me which is the Britney Spears memoir I feel like so many people read this one. I listened to the audiobook. Michelle Williams narrated it. She did such a phenomenal job capturing Britney's voice and acting out Britney's life. And 
I really loved it. I think that it's so great that Brittany had a platform in order to tell her story after being silenced for so long. You never truly know exactly what the right story is, but I feel like we've been fed so many tales about her life. So it was like nice for her to finally get her own voice and get to express her story and get to tell all of her fans the things that she wants them to know about her life, the things that she, like the experiences that she went through. I thought it was really powerful. I really, really enjoyed it. It's, it was obviously like a really hard read because she has had a lot of things happen to her. Um, and yeah, I just really enjoyed it. I think I read the entire thing the day that it came out. I couldn't stop. It was so good. All right, that was so long. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you had like a nice cup of tea or something to keep you company because that was definitely really long. <laughs> um, but those are my best books of the year, my honorable mentions, and my favorite rereads that I did this year. I always wait until the end of the year to film this because I feel like you never know, like the last book of the year could end up being a favorite book of the year, even though I don't read as much at the end of the year as I do in the beginning. It's still like there's always that chance and I would hate to leave something off of my list that just is a favorite. So anyway, <laughs> let me know what some of your favorite books of the year were and let me know if you read anything that I mentioned on this list. And that is all that I have for this video. So I will see you guys soon in a new one. Bye.